Earlier, we saw Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso signing a security pact that literally changed things forever. Any country like France or an alliance like NATO or ECOWAS now had to think twice before invading because it would bring all three African countries into the war. But things did not end there as the top diplomats of the three African countries met recently. They have planned to form something more powerful than an ordinary alliance, which you will know about in this video. They have decided to suspend the use of CFA franc, launch a new single currency, and take a step further toward becoming a single country. What does that mean in simple words? What Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have really planned that has changed the power and political landscape of Africa? And what more strategies do they have in mind to unite these three countries? Well, launching a single currency is one of the many steps they have decided on in the meeting, which you will find out shortly. Let's get started. The trio of Sahelian nations, which include Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, is progressing towards operationalizing the recently conceived initiative known as the Alliance of Sahel States. Just recently, the representatives of the foreign ministers of these states gathered in Bamako, building on a prior meeting by experts over the weekend to define the institutional architecture of the coalition. The Malian government views this mini-summit as a crucial step in strategically implementing the alliance. Foreign ministers from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger convened in Bamako to give a comprehensive shape to the military coalition among the three countries, officially established on September 16. According to a statement from Bamako's foreign ministry, ministers Olivia Ragnagnawende Ruamba from Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Yakubu from Niger, and their Malian counterpart, Abdoulaye Diop, met to add a political and diplomatic dimension to this alliance. The three parties are actively working on adopting additional protocols, establishing institutional and legal bodies for the alliance, and defining political measures and diplomatic coordination. Originally conceived as a defense pact against rebel or jihadist groups, the Alliance of Sahel States has evolved beyond military cooperation. The three nations now aim to create a genuine economic and political union. The governments of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have announced their intention to strengthen trade exchanges, jointly carry out energy and industrial projects, establish an investment bank, and more, which you will know about shortly. You should know that this alliance is a response to the suspension of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso from the Economic Community of West African States ECO was following military coups that installed military juntas hostile to France and Western powers and closely aligned with Russia. In response, the military leaders of Burkina Faso and Niger announced their plans to withdraw from the G5 Sahel force in the Sahel region of Africa. Initially established in 2017 with France's support, the leaders of the five countries agreed upon the Joint Anti-Terror Task Force. However, the military rulers of Burkina, Niger, and Mali have accused Paris of exerting undue influence, particularly in the aftermath of French deployments on their territories over the years. In a joint statement, Burkina and Niger declared their decision to withdraw from all aspects of the G5 Sahel, including the joint force. Their discontent with the organization stems from its failure to achieve objectives and bureaucratic hindrances that obstruct the legitimate aspirations of member countries for security and development. The statement conveys that their pursuit of independence and dignity is incompatible with the current form of G5 participation. It emphasizes that the G5 Sahel should not prioritize foreign interests over the welfare of their people or yield to the dictates of any power undermining their sovereignty. In a separate development, Niger also has granted authorization for the armed forces of Mali and Burkina Faso to enter its territory in case of an attack. The foreign ministers of Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso convened to discuss increased cooperation on security and other joint issues, reaffirming their commitment to mutual support in the face of potential conflicts with ECOWAS. Niger is also under ongoing ECOWAS economic sanctions, against which Niamey has initiated legal proceedings, the decision for which has been postponed. In this context, the formalization of the Alliance of Sahel States seems to be the creation of an alternative to ESOWAS, 
It's this alliance where some of the most important decisions were made. So before you know about the launch of a single currency, you should know about the three countries' plans to form a confederation, a step that is a nightmare for the West. On Friday, the foreign ministers of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, all currently under military rule, put forth a proposal for the establishment of a confederation as part of a broader initiative to unify these West African neighbors within a federation. Mali and Burkina Faso, governed by juntas that took control in 2020 and 2022, respectively, promptly expressed support for Niger's military rulers after they ousted elected President Mohamed Bazoum in July. This collaborative effort resulted in the creation of the Alliance of Sahel States, fostering closer economic bonds and mutual defense assistance in the event of a threat to a member's sovereignty or territorial integrity. In a joint statement following a two-day meeting in Mali's capital, Bamako, the foreign ministers underscored the significant potential for peace, stability, diplomatic strength, and economic development that a fortified political alliance offers. The ministers, guided by the ambition to ultimately achieve a federation uniting Burkina, Mali, and Niger, recommend the creation of a confederation to the heads of state of the Alliance of Sahel States, the statement said. This means that these three countries will become one country, each one being a federating unit. Yes, that's the foundation for creating an alliance that will unite all African countries into one body. Malian Foreign Minister Abdullahi Diop noted that these conclusions of the meetings would be presented to the heads of state. You see, facing international pressure for a swift return to civilian rule and contending with enduring jihadist insurgencies, the military regimes have established close ties. Furthermore, the economy and finance ministers of the countries recommended the creation of a stabilization fund, an investment bank, and a committee to study an economic and monetary union last month, according to the statement. You should know that creating a confederation among Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger offers significant advantages across political, security, and economic domains, influencing power dynamics and enhancing their collective impact on regional and global stages. In terms of politics, the Confederation would strengthen ties, fostering stability and cooperation. This collaboration could lead to cohesive approaches in addressing shared challenges like counter-terrorism and advancing peace in the Sahel region. Unified negotiating influence would empower the Confederation in regional and international forums, facilitating favorable trade agreements and aid package terms. The establishment of a shared institutional framework could streamline decision-making and boost efficiency. On the security front, a confederation could create a robust regional defense force, addressing cross-border terrorism and organized crime. Mechanisms for intelligence sharing and joint security operations would enhance their collective security posture. This would reduce dependence on external military interventions, enhancing autonomy in addressing security concerns. Economically, the Confederation could establish a larger, integrated market, fostering increased trade and investment. Pooled resources could be directed toward regional infrastructure projects, enhancing connectivity and stimulating economic activity. Collaborative resource management for shared natural resources could ensure sustainable utilization and maximize economic benefits. In terms of power dynamics, the Confederation would emerge as a more influential regional player exerting a stronger voice in regional affairs. Increased global recognition would attract attention and investment from global partners. The collective diplomatic clout would rise, enabling more effective negotiations on the global stage. Now, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso are already taking measures to establish a confederation, following the recommendations of their foreign ministers. Under current military juntas, these countries had previously allied in September to reap mutual benefits in defense and the economy. Now, let's talk about the proposition of a single new currency. The Alliance of Sahel States, consisting of Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, has recently entered into discussions regarding the potential introduction of a unified currency for the region. This initiative would signify a major stride toward economic integration and collaboration among the three nations if implemented. However, you should know that the name of the new currency and the proper mechanism has not been decided upon. 
it's being said that the alliance of the Sahel states would use the earlier proposed currency, tentatively named the ECO, which aims to replace the CFA franc. However, as the final currency has not yet been decided, experts think it will be the manifestation of the ECO currency proposed by ECOS. However, it was deliberately left paralyzed, which these three states are now trying to adopt and make it function. The new currency is envisioned to be introduced in phases, with the initial phase concentrating on establishing a common central bank and implementing a convergence framework to align the economic and financial policies of the participating countries. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The adoption of a single currency could yield several potential advantages for the alliance of Sahel states. Businesses and individuals would no longer incur currency exchange costs when conducting transactions within the region, potentially decreasing the cost of goods and services, boosting trade, and enhancing economic efficiency. A unified currency could encourage greater economic integration, fostering regional trade and investment, leading to increased economic growth, job creation, and improved living standards for the Alliance of Sahel State's citizens. Additionally, a single currency could enhance monetary stability and diminish the risk of exchange rate fluctuations, making it easier for businesses to plan for the future and reducing uncertainty in the region. Adopting a new currency could also decrease the Alliance of Sahel State's dependence on external currencies, such as the euro, which is currently pegged to the CFA franc, granting the region greater control over its monetary policy and reducing vulnerability to external economic shocks. But before we tell you how this new currency will change everything, you should know how the CFA franc exploits countries. France's long-standing financial control over African nations remains a trace of a questionable past. In 1962, when Modibo Keita, the president of newly independent Mali, opted to introduce the Malian franc, his neighboring countries, also recently liberated but members of the CFA franc zone, responded by imposing commercial barriers and economically isolating him. A year later, Silvanus Olympio, the Togolese president planning an independent monetary project, fell victim to an assassination by a group of military personnel trained by France, including Etienne Gyasingbe Eyadema, who later served as Togo's president from 1967 until he died in 2005. Devised by France in 1945, the CFA franc aimed to regulate the cost of accessing raw materials from the colonies and safeguard France's précaré from the monetary bloc controlled by the UK, the Sterling area. In contrast to its British counterpart, which faded away by the latter half of the 20th century, the CFA franc endures as the anachronistic currency used in 14 African countries, irrespective of their gaining independence from France decades ago. The substantial advantages for France and the stringent terms of the CFA franc explain its characterization as a tool of monetary captivity, the invisible tool of France Afrique, or simply the colonial currency. You should know that the CFA franc operates in three distinct regions, each with its own currency version. The West African CFA franc or the African Financial Community franc, issued by the Central Bank of West African States, is used by Benin, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Niger, Senegal, and Togo. At the same time, the Central African Franc or the Financial Cooperation in Central Africa Franc issued by the Bank of Central African States is used by Cameroon, Central Africa, Chad, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, and the Republic of Congo. The Comorian Franc is exclusive to the Independent Union of Comoros and is valued at 0.020 euros. In all instances, the CFA franc ensures France's guarantee of convertibility, fixed parities, free transferability, and the centralization of foreign exchange reserves. In return, the issuance and printing of money occur in France, and countries using the CFA franc are obligated to deposit at least 50% of their foreign exchange reserves at the French public treasury. Given the significant economic disparities between African and French economies, Tying the region's currency to a robust currency like the French franc in the past, and the euro today is unatural and directly impacts the economic development of the CFA franc region. This linkage results in reduced liquidity when governments need it, 
penalties in exports, and narrowed margins for central banks to intervene, leading them to focus solely on combating inflation rather than fostering economic development. Additionally, investment money is scarce, and businesses and households face prohibitive interest rates. However, for France, the advantages are undeniable. The former colonial power maintains a firm grip on the economies of these countries. Even when these nations enjoy trade surpluses, their foreign currency reserves are stored in French banks, which can then be utilized in international financial markets. French companies enjoy preferred access to local markets, can exploit and extract resources, and freely repatriate their profits without concerns about foreign exchange fluctuations. They can even establish a presence wherever and whenever within the CFA franc area. The natural question arising from these conditions is how sovereign a nation can be without monetary sovereignty. The answer lies in the evolution of the fixed parity since the CFA franc is inception and the fact that only four out of the 15 states that were members of the franc zone withdrew from the monetary agreement. The value of the CFA franc has evolved multiple times over the years, and it has always been at Paris's discretion. For example, in 1945, one French franc equaled 0.588 CFA francs. Although initially fixed, this parity changed to one French franc equaling 0.5 CFA francs in 1948 and further to 0.02 CFA francs in 1960 when France introduced its new franc. In 1994, Paris unilaterally decided to review the French franc to CFA franc parity, causing a nightmare for Africans. This decision led to the devaluation of the CFA franc to 50% of its value, with one French franc now equaling 0.01 CFA francs. The consequences were devastating, causing a collapse in the purchasing power of millions of households, escalating costs of imports, and skyrocketing prices. To this day, central banks in the region are obsessed with fighting inflation at the cost of investment and economic development. If France can unilaterally devalue the CFA franc and impose its decision on African leaders, these leaders can only proceed with internal devaluation by cutting public spending and allowing prices to rise. That's a systemic exploitation that will continue until CFA franc is suspended. There is no other solution at all. Supporters of the CFA franc argue that it brings stability to the region. However, the region has not prospered, and the single currency between 14 countries has not translated into substantial exchanges between them. Exchanges within the CFA franc zone amount to only 10% in Central Africa and 15% within West Africa, far from the 60% of businesses within the Eurozone. Despite the growing unpopularity of France in Africa and the younger generation's rejection of its presence, the current generation of African leaders like their predecessors is still behind the curve. Since the creation of the CFA franc, nothing has been spared to maintain it. Rejection of the CFA franc and the idea of giving up full monetary sovereignty to France is as old as the currency itself, evidenced by figures like Burkina Faso's Thomas Sankara or Mali's Modibo Keita, both of whom were assassinated and overthrown, replaced by strongmen aligned with France. But now, this is changing as a new single African currency is being proposed by Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Note that this launch will not be hindered because these three countries know nothing can improve until CFA franc is suspended. Now let's talk about how the new currency will change everything for these three countries. Stay tuned to know about the launch of a new airline between Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. The introduction of a single currency for the Alliance of Sahel States, including Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, offers numerous advantages for the region. It promotes economic integration, encourages sustainable growth, and strengthens their combined influence on both regional and global affairs. This unified currency eliminates the need for costly currency exchanges within the Sahel region, significantly reducing transaction costs for businesses and individuals. This streamlining facilitates cross-border trade, stimulates economic activity, and contributes to lower prices for goods and services. Embracing a common currency fortifies economic bonds among the member countries, promoting regional integration and collaboration. This creates a more extensive, consolidated market, attracting increased investment and fostering economic diversification beyond dependence on a single commodity. Not only that, 
but African countries can break free from reliance on external currencies, such as the euro, which currently pegs the value of the CFA francs used in the region. This shift will empower Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso to control its monetary policy, reduce vulnerability to external economic shocks, and enhance economic sovereignty. What's more, the establishment of a single currency amplifies the collective voice of these three countries on regional and international platforms. This enhanced unity strengthens their negotiating power in trade discussions, garners more attention from international partners, and elevates their global recognition as a unified economic entity. After launching a single currency, these three countries will be in charge of their money, unlike in the past when they had to deposit 50% of their reserves in French banks. This 50% remained in banks, depriving the governments of spending it on development and much-needed infrastructure. But now this will be properly used, which will bring prosperity. Now, let's talk about the launch of a joint airline. The economy and trade ministers of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso also put forth the recommendation to establish a common airline for the Alliance of Sahel States. The statement underscored the minister's focus on enhancing connectivity between the three states without relying on foreign airlines currently working in these countries. This entails developing and implementing programs for road, air, rail, and river networks. Additionally, the ministers made several significant recommendations, including the improvement of the free movement of people in the Alliance of Sahel States area and the construction and reinforcement of various infrastructure projects, such as dams, rural tracks, roads, pastoral perimeters, and an animal vaccination park. Also, the idea of establishing a common food safety system across the three Sahel states through dedicated bodies covering food safety stocks, early warning systems, and agricultural market observatories was also proposed. You see, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso have agreed to build all necessary infrastructures to become a confederation. Unlike earlier when they were countries distanced by differences, now they will be like a single country with united armies, banks, businesses, and institutions. What do you think? Is it a great idea for Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso to form a confederation? Will they become more powerful as these three countries will turn into the single most influential united country in the region? Let us know your thoughts on what more they can do together besides launching a single currency. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.